Hello, so we're continuing on this lead code contest 117. Let's do the last problem, which is a lead code hard. So the problem is number 1312, one minimum insertion steps to make a string a palindrome. And so the problem says, given a string S, in one step you can insert any character at any particular index of the string, and we want to return the minimum number of steps to make this string palindrome a palindrome. And so, of course, a palindrome string is just one that reads the same backward as well as forward, right? And so an example here is this one, which is already a palindrome, so we don't need to do anything. This one here is not a palindrome, and you can see B and D are different. Um, otherwise, if they were equal, this would be a palindrome, and so we could just insert D in front of B, and, uh, and B after D, or do something similar where it says B, D before B and B before D and then we could get um, so at, in both cases we need to insert just two characters and so that's the minimum we can we can do for lead code something similar the minimum to get a palindrome is five one letter strings need zero characters to be a palindrome because they are already palindrome all two letters um, strings need just one more letter to be a palindrome so you need N here um, because the middle one doesn't matter for the palindrome, even if they were equal like a a, you need however to say zero, right? And so that's the the problem here. Um, the constraint are that the length is less less than or equal to five hundred, and all characters are lowercase. So uh, let's see how we can solve this problem, right? Um, okay, so let's see how we can solve this problem. So first. Let's just go through a couple of examples. So one of the examples we had um, in the in the in the problem statement was this here M B A D um, M right. So you can see here. Well, we don't need to worry about this because the number is um, is even. Like the number of characters is odd. So this one can be whatever characters. Um, uh, whatever character possible and then here they are already equal so we can skip and we can just try to insert some characters to make the rest palindrome so here you could have the, your first observation which is basically if um, the first character is equal to second character to last character right then you could just call the function basically by recursing on position 1 in the character and position n minus 1, uh, n minus 2, right? And same thing would happen if you had something similar. Let's say you had m, uh, c, b, a, d, c, m, right? So this is equal, so you, so both m are equal, so you go to the next portion, right? You find that c and c are equal, so you go to the next portion. So basically, what does this mean, right? So if we number the characters here, um, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and try to generalize this. What we are looking for is um, basically when, when, when the position i, some position i, let's say this is i and this is j, right? The i is on the left, and if we start i from the left, and start j from the far right. If si is equal to sj, then we need to just recurse on what? We move i by 1, right? So that we can reach b here, so i plus 1. And we move j backwards so by 1, so j minus 1. And that would be the result. Whatever is needed to make b a d um, a palindrome, that's what is needed for the entire string, right? So that's the first observation. Now, what happens in the case where they are not equal? They are different. The else case here. So the else case, that's where we have, if we go to the back to our first string, that's when we have our i here and our j here, right? So you can notice here we have two choices, right? To make a palindrome here. We could either insert d before b, right? And then insert, so so we'd have B and D M, and then the next step after that we will insert. Uh, so we still have. Uh, let me just do this exactly as it is. So D B A. We need to insert 
B here after D so that they can be a palindrome, right? So we need to insert this here. Let me just mark the one that I just that I'm adding. So here we need to insert B to make it a palindrome. And here we inserted this D here. Right? So the first choice, so if we choose to do this, so if we choose to do this, that leads us to doing this and we end up with just needing two characters, right? The other possibility that we can do is, well, we could choose to insert for D first, right? So we could do something like M, B, A, and then insert before, uh, sorry, I made a m small mistake here. I should have put B here before D so that it can be a palindrome really, right? So here, um, in the second choice, we could choose to to actually insert B after D, right? So instead, um, after it or before it, both that don't matter. Just making basically doing this first, doing the second step first. And so that would be putting maybe B here. Putting it before or after doesn't matter. If we put it before for one, we have to put it before for the other for it to be a palindrome, right? But since in the problem we don't want the string itself that may became palindrome, we just want the cast, so we wouldn't worry about that, right? So first we would do this, and then in the second step, to make it fully palindrome, because this portion here became palindrome, to make it fully palindrome, we'd have B, we'd have to put D before B, so D here, and then we'd have B, A, B, D, M, and it would become palindrome and two places. We needed two steps, right? And this, in this example, the two chases have equal, um, equal characters, equal steps, but in some cases, maybe this is three and this is one. So we'll try all of them because we don't, we can't know in advance. So we'll try all the, ch all of them and take the minimum. So essentially, that's what we will be here we're doing here. So take both choices or try both choices and then and take them in. That's what we'll be trying here. <coughs> so now for our recursion, we know the smaller steps, right? So just let me, so we know we are, we are doing some kind of recursive solution here. So for our recursion, let's define some things. So first let's define the base case. So our base case here um, can happen when I and J meet, like if the pointers I and J meet, let's say now we are at A here, then we are done, right? Or even if, let's say in the case of a, of a, um, like a, this is an even, an odd length, so that's why they met at the same place. In case of an odd uh, character, an odd string, an odd length string, they will, G would go after i and so both are we mean we are done right and so the base case is when if i is bigger or equal to j and at that point um the number of steps to make it palindrome have already been already added and so we can just return zero because there is nothing to do anymore right and so now what are the uh, smaller state or the smaller um, recursion for a recursion we need to have the smaller states right that we are computing to and aggregate to find the results so what are these in here so in our case it's um, we as I mentioned here it's if both ends are already equal then we could just recurse on just return recursing on I plus one, so just advancing both both pointers, I forward and G backward. Otherwise, we try the two choices and we return the min. So we return the min of the two choices. So let me just make it explicit. So choice one would be um, <coughs> doing the doing um, I plus one, replacing for replacing I first. Sorry, the first step would be either replacing I first, and so making it equal to j right like we did did here or making the the other choice is making j 
inserting for j something that is equal to i, right? And so the first choice, let's say we, we would recurse on i plus 1 and we would still be at j, which basically means that we inserted, so basically this case here is when we take, um, let me just mark it down here, so this case is when we have, let's say, for maybe for m, the case that we had in the example, which is m, b, a, d, m. So this case, we are going to make, um, we are going to add a character that is equal to i, so that would mean that here before d we would add let's say b right and so we would have a b so we'd have i was here right and j was here right and so now we made something that is equal to uh to uh, let me fill it here using this so now i is equal to Okay, let me, actually we will put this B before, after D. So we'll put B after D. So I'll put B here and G was here, right? So I is already now matched because we added a letter that matches it. So it's matched with this, right? So that means we can advance I because it's now, we inserted a character that matches it. So now I becomes here, but G stays at its place, right? Because these two now are matched, and we had, of course, an M here before, so M here, right? So here, the the input would be I plus 1, because we advanced I, and J will stay at the same position. Now, what is the second choice? The second choice is when we do something for, so when we do something like this. So we had the same thing, we had M A, D, M, right? So what we will do is... Instead, we'll insert the equivalent for for J position. So we had J here, and we had I here, right? So what we will do is we will put M, and then before B, we'll insert something for G. So the equivalent of G, basically is G. And then we would have B, uh, and then we'd have B, A, D, M. So now g has something equivalent to it so now g is equal to this right and i remember i was here so i was here and j was here so j now found something equal to it so we can advance j right so we advance j to here so we advance j to backwards by one so now it's a j minus one but you can notice i stayed at the same place because we inserted before it and so we get ij uh, I, minus 1. And in both cases, we'll be adding 1 because we inserted a character. And that's a step that we should count in our cost. So that means we will add 1 here and 1 here. Right, okay. So now that we have two choices, we just return the minimum of both. Of choice 1 and choice 2. And this is the... Um, the recursive so now we have our recursive solution basically we have the base gate we have the smaller state um we'll just need to because this is um th there will be some repeated states that will be um called again and again and there is no need to recalculate them we will need to have a, a memorization table or map that keeps track of any state that was computed before so that we don't recompute it and just return it from the cache um, but essentially, this is the main idea, and so let's just um, see it again. So the main idea is we have our base case. If both ends are equal of the string, we just recurse on i plus 1, j minus 1. Otherwise, we try both possible choices and see whichever one is gives us the, the smaller result when it goes all the way down until the end, which one gives us the smaller um, number of steps, we just return that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So let's code this solution up and see if it passes lead code. Okay, so now let's code this solution here and see what we get. So first we need a function that will help us recurse because we'll start from, so I just call it a helper um, that has both ends and it would be called for the starting position, which is zero, 
and the far right position, the far left position and the far right position, which is n minus 1, which is n, I mean just length of the string. And the base case here is, as we said, it's when j, i and j either meet or j becomes, passes by i, and we return 0 in that case. And the smaller states for our recursion are two things, either um, si is equal to sj, and in that case we will return just calling the helper again on i plus 1 and j minus 1 as we said, otherwise we will try both choices, so we'd have choice 1 and choice 2. Choice 1 is, is going to be, we are, we are going to add one character, and then that character is going to be added for before i, right? And it will match j, or we could do add a character before after j that would match i, and at that point it would be i and j minus 1. And these are the two choices, so we return the min of both of choice 1 and choice 2. So that's pretty much all there is. This is, of course, may get time limited exception, so we'll add memoization, but um, but this is the this is the solution. So let me just add a test case here for for this and read code. Okay, so you can see it passes both test cases. Um, now, um, I'm just going to add memorization, and also you could see here we don't need this variable. It was just for clarity, so I could just put this here. And now um, I need a memo table that keeps track of anything that has the same i and j that is, gets called again, so that we don't waste time computing it. We can just return whatever was cached. And so to do that, we need a map. And here I will check just if both, in Python, a key can be a pair of values. So I would just use as a key the pair of values i and j. And so if it is already, if it already exists, I just return it. So that would be memo of i and j. And here before returning the value, I will need to, um, to assign it here. So in, both, in whichever case, I assign it and then that's what I return at the end. I assign it here so that next time, when the same state gets called again, I already have the solution, so I return it imme immediately without computing it. Um, and so now we can run this. And submit. Okay, so this passes. Um, one thing to note here for the time complexity is we will be <coughs> So this would be, because we will be processing every pair once, right? Because we are memoizing here. So it would be O of n squared time complexity. And a similar thing, same thing for space complexity too, because we'll store in the memo every pair, um, i and j, right? Um, yeah. So next we will see um, how we can solve this problem using dynamic programming. Like just a, a bottom-up dynamic programming, I mean. Okay, so now let's see how we can use dynamic programming to solve this problem. So, um, first for dynamic programming, we need to find a couple of things, right? So the first thing we need to identify our DP state, which usually a DP state is just what the problem asks us, right? So the problem asks us for the minimum number of steps um, to make a palindrome, right? So we know that that kind of our state. Um, so if we represent it in terms of dp of ij, so that would be just the minimum um, number of steps to make basically the substring i to j uh, a palindrome, right? So now the goal or the result that we would want to return um, so now the goal that we want to return at the end is just the 
basically dp of 0, so the entire string to n minus 1 such that n is the length of the string. And uh, and if we look at the now, so these are the f the steps for we need to s the state, we need the goal, and we need to find our base case, right? We need to define the base case. We need to define the recurrence relation. And another thing we need to define um, is the um, the order of uh, iteration. Sometimes this is not required, but other time it is like what order should we do the for loop so that when we are at some state the states that it depends on have already been computed right so the first thing is the base case so one thing we can just notice for the base case is that well dp of i i like starting from i and ending at i which is just one character that's always zero because that's by default is a padding drum right so this is our base case Now, the recurrence relation would use something similar to what we defined here. So, the recurrence relation, we know that if both, as we discussed earlier, si is equal to sj, then in that case, we know that dp of ij would be just equal to dp of i plus 1 and j minus 1, right? We know also that if... Um, if it's not, we know we have two choices and we need to take the min between them, right? So we can just do that here and we can take the min of the first choice, which is i plus 1j. The second choice is i minus 1, ij minus 1, right? So it would be the min of dp of i plus 1j and of dp of i j minus 1. And we need to do plus 1 because we are... Um, inserting a character so we, there is a step added here so we have now our accounts relation now we need to think about the order of the for loop so one thing we can notice here is that uh, when for i like i depends on depends on i plus 1 as you can see here and j minus 1 so when we have i the state at i we need to have com already computed i plus 1 and for j, we need to have already computed j minus 1, right? So that tells you that for i, we need to, the for loop, um, for loop for i needs to go backwards, right? Because if it, if it wasn't backwards at i, we would have i minus 1, and that's not what we want. We needed to go backwards so that I, after computing the state i plus 1, we want to compute the state i. And for j, si since at position j, we, know we want to already have computed j minus 1, we need to the for loop for j to be forward, right? So this tells us that the for loop for i here needs to be something like 4, I in, of course, we will start out from, since we are going backwards, we will start out from the last index, which is n minus 1. And since we are going backwards, we will do minus 1. And then we'll do, we'll stop when we reach 0. So for Python, that would be stopping at, we will put minus 1 so that we can stop at 0. For J, since we wanted to go back, to go forward, we know that we will need J to be starting from the first position. And since we want, as we said here, I needs to be before J, right? I needs to be before J um, because the string we are looking for is a string from I to J, right? So our for loop here needs to start from the position after I because if they meet, that's the end. That's the end of processing for us. If they meet, that's also the base case, right? Which we already know that it's zero. So we need to start from I plus 1 and go all the way until, since we are going forward, because at G we want to have already computed J minus 1, we will need to stop at N, right? And so now um, we pr pretty much have everything we need for our um, dynamic programming solution. We have the DP state. We know the goal that we need to return at the end. We have the base case. We have the recurrence relation. And we have the order of the operations that we need to do. So, what does that mean for us? So, let's try to write um, 
the code here so the function is min insertion and we get the string so um, we need the dp array right which is going to be just zero for um, so it's a 2d table right and we want it to contain all the way until 0 and minus 1. So we need it to be n plus 1. And since the base case is 0, we can fill it with 0 so that all of them would be 0. And so here n. And, and since it's a 2D array, we need the same thing to repeat for range of n. Right? And once we have that, we need, um, so I'm just going to define n here, which is the length of the, of the string. And um, and then, once we have that, we need to have the, um, we need to do our for loop. So first we said for i, it's backward, it's like this, so we can just do that. So it's for i in range of um, n minus 1 and going backward and for j it's in range of i plus 1 to n as we said here and we need to do the recurrence relation so we could just take this and put it here so if they are equal that would mean we have um, dp of ij equal to dp of i plus 1 j minus 1 otherwise we would have the two choices and taking the min so that would mean j equal to 1 plus the min of dp of i plus 1 and since we already computed i plus 1 because of the way we did uh, the loop we already have that and so it's i plus 1 j and since already you also we computed j minus 1 because of the loop for j here, we have dp of i j minus 1. If we did it in any other order, we, we may not have these values once we reach, once we are at i j. And at the end, we can just return the goal function that we defined here, which is dp of 0 and minus 1. So at the end, we just return dp of 0 and minus 1. And we are done. So from this, you could see that um, here we are doing O of n work, right? And here we are doing also O of n work. So overall, this is in terms of time complexity. <coughs> this is an O of n squared, and also in terms of um, space complexity, this is also O of n squared because we are um, having this dp, 2d dp array um, that has those dimensions n by n, and that's pretty much it. So now let's type this into light code and make sure it passes. Okay, so I just typed here what we said in the overview, um, the same exact solution uh, with the dp array, the order of iteration, and the recurrence relation here, and returning the goal function. So let's run this, make sure it works. Okay, so looks good. I'll submit. And as we said, the time complexity and space complexity for this is um, O of n squared. So, can we... So Okay, so we see that it passes. Now, one thing to think about is can we make this better? Can we reduce something? Well, we can't reduce our time complexity, but or at least I don't know of a way to do that, but we can reduce the space complexity here to be less than O of n squared. How can we do that? So one thing you can see here is that we actually don't need um, the entire 2D array because at every point we just need i plus 1 and j minus 1, right? So we can just keep track of two things, right? Of these two things, essentially. So the way we can do that is... Um, so the way we can do that essentially is just um, let's, instead of doing this array here, this two-dimensional array, let's just keep one, 
and now we don't need this this is just dp of j and now you can think okay how can i get dp of i plus one since i no longer have i well we would have just something here to hold this value to hold this value here and so instead of assigning that we'll assign prev and so we need to make sure prev is this value and so to be to do that we can just assign it here so prev would be um dp of i plus one j minus one which is just the previous i so to do that we'll just have a thumb variable here that is because that is go going to hold the previous row j value right and we will assign that here because we couldn't do dp of j because it gets overridden for the new row but the previous row value is is this and so we assign it here so that the next use the next um, iteration we use it now here we don't no longer have i plus one but that's actually just the previous value of dp of j that's just this right we can also put tomp here now this j dp of j minus one we have that still because we are keeping track of the entire row and so this is just zero for just one d dimensional array and you and that's pretty much it to reduce this to an open uh, space instead and so here also at the end we no longer have this zero dimension it's just the last row n minus one value and so we can just run this Okay, so this seems good. Um, so essentially what we saw here is first we start out to started out with a recursive solution. We added memorization to make it more performant. And then we did bottom-up dynamic programming with space that was O of n squared. And we realized that we, can, we don't need that much space. And so we reduced it to O of n. Um, and now there are other possible solutions that we can, um, that we can look at. But uh, I'm not going to go over th them here. But... One of them is to just um, look for the longest common sequence, right, between the string and its reverse. Because for a palindrome, the string and its reverse have to be equal. So if we compute the longest common sequence, the number of characters missing to make a palindrome would be just the length of the string minus the length of the longest common uh, sequence between the string and its reverse, right? So that's one solution. The other solution we can do is kind of just look for the longest palindromic sequence. There is a problem on lead code that asks us that. And once we have that, the solution would be just the length of the string minus that, right? Because we know the maximum palindrome we have so far, then the, to make it a palindrome, we just need to insert the letters for the remaining ones that are not in the longest palindrome, right? And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so that's it for this problem. Thanks for watching and see you next time.